Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a weekly review video with Johnny. We'll go through some of the things that have caught Johnny's attention this week here in Spain. So uh, let's go to the video. All right, Johnny, how are you this week? Good, Stu. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Busy week? Yeah, it's been busy, but you know, um, we're tirando como podamos. <laughs> yeah, that's the way. That's the way. Surviving as you can. That's it. So uh, what's mm -hmm. on the agenda this week? First of all, so Bank of America has talked about uh, its prediction for Spain's recovery over the next two years. And Spain is, uh, they have it down as the second um, best recovering country in Europe behind France. Uh, expected a 5% uh, annual GDP growth uh, both years. Uh, uh, so 22 and 23. Oh, okay. 22 and 23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything for 21? So for 21... Uh, I may be wrong, actually. It may be this year and 2022. Okay, so 20, 21, yeah. 22, 5.1% uh, yeah. that you said, right? That's it, yeah. Which, which so is... by 2023, that's where when it will be the most... Um, oh, okay, yeah. that's right, yeah, yeah. Well, I've had the quick discovery, yeah. Okay, so... Not bad, I explained that a bit. Yeah, wrong. so yeah. I think they said, yeah, to get back to those uh, 2019 or those 2019 levels... 2023 is going to be the year. I think that's what they said or something like that. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that's it. Good. Yeah. And uh, what's the reason? So they kept it quite high level, but essentially they've said that um, Spain has started to open up relatively quicker than they've expected, which I think makes sense because I guess we expected the tight restrictions that were brought in in October to go on until, um, well, a couple of weeks ago yeah. when the state of alarm ended. But we have seen commu uh, autonomous communities relaxing rules as early as March, as April. So, um, yeah, that's helped the economy up a little bit as well. Mm. It does say, though, that um, more relaxation of measures is needed to really uh, kick the, yeah, kickstart the economy more and really boost that recovery. Yeah. I think it's fairly clear that the country uh, as a whole is, I said this in today's video that I recorded, that they're, they're prioritizing the economy over health now, right? So you can see that in the different parts of Spain. Madrid's always prioritized prioritize the economy to some extent right and and now other places are starting to do it as well that they've got the health situation under control valencia for example allowing people to come in wanting foreign tourists to come back all of those things so the economy is the push i think yeah well the situation the health situation now as you say does seem to be a lot more controlled than it was several months ago and, and at christmas time and, and back in september last year yeah, yeah. so yeah well, I think I think we spoke about it last week, but the the vaccination program is starting to show results, especially with the elderly population, for example, the over sixties, the over seventies, and uh, as I said, you know, people living in elderly residences as well are are not being as affected as they were back in those months that we just mentioned, and. And there is a chance to, you know, to to prioritize the economy, as we said, to to keep things open for longer, especially bars and restaurants. We said that sector was recovering last week. Uh, curfews have gone in a lot of places around the country. So, you know, and, and people are getting back to work. I think we even mentioned last week, Johnny, as well, 90 percent traffic lim uh, levels again in places like Madrid. Yeah, well, it does seem that the economy is much more active and mm. you go out and about and things do seem, I'm not going to say completely normal um, as to how they were before the pandemic, but yeah, there's a lot more activity, let's say, in the, in the streets and in, yeah. in shops, restaurants, bars and when, yeah, local businesses. When did you arrive in Madrid again? So February 2020. So February 2020, so just before the pandemic... Exactly. But, yeah, I had a I had a full month <laughs> to enjoy it. But you'd been here before, right? Yeah, I'd visited the city. I had an idea of what to expect. And I'd been elsewhere in Spain as well. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So 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 you 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 had seen Spain in its full capacity, let's say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the pandemic changed everything, and then we're just slowly trying to come out of that. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I saw one article. I I can't remember where it was related to this topic, and it, and it said that there's going to be uh, and I'm I'm quoting here large and lasting scars uh, on the Spanish economy. So it's recovering, but you know I think it's true for everywhere though. Um, yeah, the eco the economic impact will be quite long lasting. I think on every economy in the world, not just in Spain. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, and so another thing is obviously we've been pushed towards this digital economy now that companies have seen the capabilities um, that they have to work remote and to work digitally. 
Um, and also, you know, a lot of companies like Amazon, like Zoom, like Netflix have really benefited um, from this um, situation. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, Although I did see today, or maybe it was yesterday, I read that um, companies uh, are saying that their productivity is down 20% and there's a big push to get people back into the office. I don't know whether that's affecting you or not. Yeah, I mean, it, I guess it depends on the company. There's there's people that enjoy working from home, that work better from home, but you know it has its challenges as well. Um, you can start a routine, but you don't get to see your co-workers as often. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's it can be quite repetitive as well. Yeah, um, yeah. And knowing that you don't have too many options of what you can and what you can do, then yeah. It can, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And those other industries that you mentioned before that have benefited, uh, have benefited Amazon, I think they announced that they're going to buy the um, MGM studios, I think. So that's a, a huge purchase. Yeah, that does ring a bell. I feel like I've seen something about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they, this yeah. for their Amazon Prime service, right? I don't know what it's what it's about, but if they're buying a, a filmmaking um, studio, then obviously they're they're, they're going to push into that, I suppose. But you know, a company that has definitely done very well since uh, the beginning of this. Yeah. Yes, indeed. All right, good, Johnny. What's next? Yeah. So next, we've got uh, the reintroduction of the. To simplify it in English, it will be the law against uh, fiscal fraud. Um, so previously. Well, there's various measures that have come as part of this law. But previously, for example, um, Athienda would have to notify well in advance a company or um, a person if they were going to carry out an inspection on their, their financial situation. Now, um, it's not been eliminated completely, but it can definitely be done at much shorter notice and w with an element of surprise, essentially. So that's yeah, okay. one of the major changes, yeah. So su surprise tax inspections. Essentially, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, trying yeah. to crack down on company fraud. I guess so. Yeah. There's a couple of other elements that have come in. So I think um, payment in cash is now being limited to a thousand euros um, in certain companies. As well, again, part of this this law. Uh, there were some changes with regards to customs. I didn't quite understand exactly what they are, but I. A spokesman from the industry did say that they're expecting to lose business to other EU countries as a result of the changes. Yeah, okay, good, good. Yeah, I think there's also some changes to the way the um, – there's a couple of um, – um, not really sure what how, how you would call them, but they're like tax vehicles. There's one that's called a SICAV. There's another one called uh, Sosimi or something like that. And, yeah, real estate uh, investment companies. That's yeah. it. Yeah, and with the SICAV as well, I think it, I think they're common in other European countries as well. But the government's basically declared that it's going after big fortunes. No, they're going to try to regulate the the you know the 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 rich in this country and really crack down on those investment vehicles that they have to make sure that they are following the the the, the tax lines because. Um, I think with one of these sick cabs, you pay something like one percent tax or something, and and there is a risk that a lot of uh, the wealthy here are already planning to move their money out of the country. So the government has to be careful. Yeah, and one of the more concrete measures that they've taken um, to counter that is, I believe it's a fifteen percent tax on any undistributed profits from the company. So yeah, you can see that the, as you say, um, they're trying to uh, regulate these investment vehicles. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. But uh, yeah, surprise tax inspections. Um, yeah, I knew they were common a, a few years ago. I don't know why they went away. Obviously, there was some type of regulation that came in that made them uh, illegal, but uh, bringing them back again. So yeah, the government uh, really cracking down, and um, or, or at least they're saying that they will. We're, we're, you know, what they actually do is another thing, but we'll see what happens. We will. This is this law is approved anyway, so it, it will come into force soon. Yeah. yeah, and, and the, the one, the other one that we mentioned there was the uh, Sosimi. What, what are they exactly? Real estate funds, are they? Yeah, so uh, the way it was described was um, companies that specialize in real estate investment. So I'm not exactly sure if that refers to yeah companies that are real estate developers or if they purchase real estate and then yeah use it, let it out for commercial or uh, private use. Uh, I would imagine, yeah, something along those lines would be what that's referring to. Yeah, so again, the government trying to crack down on those, make sure that everything's going well. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Um, but obviously they think that there is a lot of tax fraud when it comes to uh, companies uh, here in Spain. I don't know what the figures are. Have you, have you heard anything about figures? I haven't heard about the figures, no. But mm. um, what I will say is there's a channel on YouTube that I watch called Nomad Capitalist. I find it quite interesting because it's all about international tax strategy. Um, and frequent themes that are coming up on there is tax increases in the West um, and trying to close the loopholes yeah. um, for people living in the West to get to get around. Yeah, I, I've seen that channel. It's a, a blonde guy with glasses. Is that the one? Yeah, that's him, yeah. Where does he live? In Panama or somewhere, doesn't he? He has so many residences, I don't, I don't even know. I believe he has Malaysia, Singapore, Mexico, Colombia. I think he mm. has at least mm. residency in, in those countries, but yeah. Uh, and, and the idea of that channel is to, is to help people basically pay less tax. Essentially, legally, of course, yeah. Oh, okay. so his motto oh, okay. is his motto is "Go where you're treated best," which is something yep. he got from his father. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. he's 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 often talking about um, the West and how tax tax increases are, are yep. become, going to become more common. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he, he I think he's done a few specific videos on Spain. Um, I think he did one a couple of, maybe last year or the year before. I can't remember. Which basically told people that Spain is not a not a good country to live in. Yeah, he said, I think he found it a bit overrated. Um, but again, this is purely looking from a tax perspective because that's his his focus. He, you know, if it's a lifestyle purchase, then he's, he understands he's for it. But yeah, when it comes to international tax planning strategy, then mm. yeah, he doesn't consider Spain one of the more attractive um, tax programs. No, no. And I think he also yeah. mentioned something about investing here as well, investing you know, having to, you know, in order to get a visa, it's very expensive as well. And there's other countries that allow you to get those visas at a, for investing less. Yeah, for example, Portugal, I believe maybe Cyprus, Malta is quite, Malta I think is quite expensive. But yeah, he's definitely, um, when he talks about international tax planning, he talks less and less about Europe and more about countries in, in Asia and countries in Latin America. Yeah. Is he American or English? I can't remember. He's American. Uh, well, he grew up in the US, renounced his citizenship um, for, for, for tax purposes. But yeah, he's, um, yeah, he was born, grew up in the US, and now he has yeah, several residency uh, options around the world. Okay, fantastic. The nomad capitalist. The nomad capitalist. All right, good. So <laughs> yeah. we've got you, uh, millennials with money, and the nomad capitalist. All right. Good. Okay, <laughs> yeah. good. So anything else about this topic, John? I think that was all on this topic, Stu. All right, good. So what's the last on the list? Yeah, so I wanted to talk about your ITV uh, experience a little bit. So I saw your video. I always enjoy your vlogs in the car, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about, I thought we could talk about some of the changes that have come into effect and what the more complicated process might look like. Well, they're coming um, into effect as of the 1st of June, I think. Yeah, yeah 1st of June, yeah. Yeah, so there's some increases in um, the fines for, um, you know, rolling around if your disc is, is not up to date. Yeah. Uh, maybe you could explain, so I saw there was unfavorable and negative in terms of the classification what is the difference between the two yeah well um basically i mean i'm not an expert on this topic johnny i don't pretend to be i've only just done it as a as a user as a user you know and i've Mm -hmm. I've only had one or two problems in the the whole time that i've been doing it but basically if your car is um if they consider it not to be favorable it means that it's just basically not roadworthy i think right so there's different Mm. classifications that they can give you so um if they find a if they find a, a fault with your car and it's not serious you get the option to you know to to fix it up and then come back in a certain amount of time in order to get the to get checked again to make sure you've got the problem mm. fixed so okay. maybe that could be i don't know leaking leaking oil or maybe you've got a problem with the brakes or suspension or something like that so they give you a chance to get it fixed and there's probably cars that go through that just get taken off the road immediately so so sometimes when you go to the to the to the ITV station or the MOT station you'll see cars parked there that obviously look as though they're not roadworthy so they've been you know immediately taken off the road um, yeah. but the majority of cars that go through come out with some type of you know they either pass straight away they give you like a little bit of a a warning for example which is what happened to me yesterday with the headlights they're a little bit dirty so i have to clean them and the uh, a couple of years ago i had a problem i think with 
the coolant in the car was too, there was too much coolant in the car. So he didn't give me the sticker. He told me to get rid of the coolant and then come back when I did. And, you know, so I just, you know, got rid of the extra coolant and, and, and went, went back through no dramas, but, um, yeah. the, uh, it's not the most difficult thing to do, but the, you, you just don't want hassles, you know, and it, yeah. it, it can, it can be fast. a stressful 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I hear you on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I read earlier that there's two and a half million cars circulating around the country without insurance or ITV. So there's a lot of cars, and this is one of the reasons that this is one of the reasons they're cracking down on that as well. Ah, uh, okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So two two and a half million cars that haven't passed this ITV test or have insurance. Dear- yeah, dear oh dear. <laughs> and then there's two other changes. Um, so one, this would be interesting for viewers from the UK. So if you have a UK uh, registered vehicle or a vehicle that's come from the UK, then you have to get it uh, registered with a Spanish plate this year um, due to the Brexit situation. Yeah, because Britain uh, and is then, now a third yeah. country. That's right. Exactly, yeah. I think, But I think even if you're in, you buy a car in another EU country, you still have to get it registered in Spain um, with a Spanish plate, but you maybe have more time to do it. Yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly what the changes are, but the, the, the changes for the UK is obviously because they're now third country status, so they don't come under those EU rules anymore. And mm-hmm. I think there was a case, I think there was the situation, probably it, it, it's all related to the to the time frames. probably, you're right, yeah. And then another one was, um, so last year, the state of alarm meant that um, there was like an automatic... Um, Prologa, so yeah. like prolongation, extension. Yeah, exactly an extension to the um, to the validity of certain discs. Yeah. Um, that's not been applied this year. So if you got a um, an MOT or ITV last year, uh, then the state of alarm that was brought into effect in October and is ran till May, um, there's no extended validity as a result of that. Yeah, and that's going to catch a lot of people out. Yeah. And uh, the fines that they mentioned are anywhere between 200 and 500 euros if you get caught. So if you get caught Mm -hmm. in a random inspection, so for example, you're driving along and all of a sudden there's a a police control, one of the things that they do look at is that little sticker that you've got on the car and they, Mm -hmm. or whether you've got the sticker there or not, because some people don't put the sticker on. So they pick you up on that. And the other thing is that there's cameras on certain highways around the country as well. And uh, if you don't, to have it up to date you get a letter sent in the mail ah okay yeah so it's better to have everything in order of course well well of course but you know as i said 2.5 million cars circulating without it and four out of 10 cars here in spain uh, have it expired so there are uh, a lot of dodgy vehicles on the road <laughs> yeah <laughs> mm. yeah but you don't drive johnny so you don't have to go through the process so you're lucky <laughs> yeah for now until so, the day i do get a car <laughs> yeah somebody said on today's video somebody living in alicante i think it was a, a guy called brian he said that um they're not accepting people to go through if you don't understand what's being what's being said to you so maybe there are some people living down there in alicante malaga and so forth that don't speak spanish very well have trouble doing this test because you know basically you're there for 10 minutes and the guy's shouting things at you you know lights uh headlights uh horn uh warning lights you know so you have to be fairly uh, up to date on your spanish in order to go through yeah and that um concurs with something you said in a video the other day which was obviously coming to spain with a level of spanish um, yeah so good to have that car vocabulary uh, up to scratch for such well, an I, event yeah well that's it i mean it's not like i said it's not a difficult process it's only it's only 15 minutes and the guy just sort of shouts at you to do things when you're in the car like <laughs> he tells you to turn the fog lights on less that i didn't hear that because the engine was running so i had to ask him three times and uh you know you have to rev the engine when they stick a little uh, stick in the exhaust pipe uh, mm. What else do you have to do? Uh, windscreen wipers, they have to be uh, functional with uh, water um, and uh, lights, yeah, brake lights, mm. tail lights, headlights. Mm. Yeah. How does it compare to when you've been in Australia and if you've had to do the same process there? Australia, we don't have it, or at least we didn't have no? it when I lived there. No, 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 no. No, okay. no, no. I don't know whether they have it now, but uh, I don't think that there's a similar system. There's a system where the police, if the police pull you over because they see that your car's not roadworthy, they 
or at least when I lived there, they used to slap a yellow sticker on your windscreen, which meant your car wasn't roadworthy, and that was the end of that. Until you got it roadworthy, then you had to go to the police to get it checked. You know, you went mm. you went over the pits, as they said. But, um, yeah, there's no MOT ITV system in Australia, as far as I know, unless they brought one in in the last 20 years. Yeah, it's difficult for me, obviously, to talk about the UK system because I haven't personally been through it. But, yeah, my parents have um, older cars, so they have to put them through their MOTs regularly. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they seem to get through um, okay each year. Yeah, but, yeah. But, yeah, yeah well, I think I, those checks that you say in Spain sound yeah. more or less reasonable, yeah. Well, I imagine the MOT prior to Brexit was European regulations, right, I imagine, no? Yeah, I mean, it would make sense, yeah. So it would have been exactly the same, I suppose. You know, if you had a, your car in the UK, you would have had to go on through a similar thing that you do here because, that, like I said, I think it's a European regulation. But, yeah, it, it's, you know, something that I have to do every year with that car and uh, cars that are over four years, I think it's um, it's every two years. And then once they get to a certain age, it's every year. But, uh, you know, it was a little bit of a stressful day yesterday. Yeah, well, glad it all went well for you in the end. Yeah. That's it. And uh, I didn't have any serious problems except for that headlight, which is a little bit dirty. Not not, not dirt, dirt. it's just the, the glasses change color or ah, the plastic yeah, yeah. or whatever. It's covering it and I have to try to clean it Yeah, before okay. I go back. Yeah. That's it. Okay. And uh, have you heard anything on uh, the tourism situation, Johnny? Are there um, any British flights coming in? Have you heard anything about that? Um, I haven't, to be honest. It's not something I've paid too much attention to. Um, I, I know... Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not gonna, I went not to make it up. Uh, I went to a website called uh, Flight Radar Twenty Four the other day, and uh, I checked oh, I was out the amount of seeing the flights in. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I checked out. So it's a great it's a great place if you if you're into uh, aviation planes. Yeah. And um, I checked out the uh, the amount of planes circling over Spain, or flying mm -hmm. over Spain, I should say. And mm. um, uh, yeah, there were a few. There were a few. I noticed a few more going to Portugal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it makes sense because Portugal is on the UK's green list. Exactly, so, exactly. That is the key. The green list yeah. is the key. That's it. That's it is it. indeed, yeah. All right, Charlie, we'll start <laughs> yeah. to wrap it up. Anything else? No, that's all. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> all right, great. Well, have a good day and uh, we'll be in contact. Yes, you too, Stu. All right, Speak see you later. later. Good day. Bye bye. Bye. So there we go. That was the weekly review video with Johnny. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.